Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Reddit Lessons. Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me today. And today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the brand new men's release from the company Calvin Klein. This one is called Calvin Klein Defy. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on it, so make sure to stay tuned. I begin this fragrance review of Calvin Klein's Defy, the brand new fragrance released just this year in 2021. I think it becomes available August 1st of 2021. I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, if you like fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. And also if you can give this video a thumbs up, it would really mean a lot to me. And I also wanna mention that there is gonna be a giveaway attached to this video for a five ml decant. So the only thing you need to do to enter this giveaway, which is international by the way, is just leave a comment down below letting me know what is your favorite Calvin Klein fragrance. If you don't have one, you can just say you don't have one. And I will be picking the winning comment in one week's time. So definitely make sure to come back to this video in one week to see if you've won because I will be pinning it to the top of the comment thread. So this is a collaborative effort among perfumers Lock Dong, Pascal Guerin, and Anne Filippo, three very accomplished perfumers. And of course, it has a very unique bottle shape. It's a little bit angular here on this side and curved out on the left-hand side, my right, your left, and the name is Defy. Now, it has a few different interesting notes in there. So it has mandarin oil, cedar leaf uh, oil. It also has violet, clary sage, which I think is the sclerene molecule, which is being used in a lot of designer and niche fragrances as of late. There's also violet and vetiver. And so it seems to be a pretty comp complex note breakdown, excuse me, but I think the star player in this fragrance really is that note of lavender. On my skin at least, and on my clothing, when I did wear it, it really popped out. And it also kind of reminded me of a few other fragrances on the market. So I'm excited to give you my in-depth opinions. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get this fresh citrusy vibe. Now I know it contains bergamot and mandarin. I really get more bergamot than anything else. And the bergamot that's in here is very bright. It's very refreshing. It doesn't smell super natural or anything like that. It's not like a Zerjoff Neo or I recently reviewed I Am Coming Home by Floraiku. That has a very natural citrus in there as well. It doesn't smell like that, but it's this very sort of designer-ish freshness that you're gonna get from it. So it does open up with the citrus, more bergamot than mandarin, again, and then it very quickly transitions into a lavender scent. Now, here's where I initially started picking up on some other fragrances that I do own, I've owned for many years, and it does start to remind me of a few other fragrances. And so the first one that I could compare this one to is Abercrombie and Fitch's Fierce, and I can also compare this one to Legend by Moon Blanc. But I think the thing that makes this one just a little bit different is that it has more of like that fresh aquatic blue vibe. And so I saw online some people were comparing it to Yves Saint Laurent's Y. In my opinion, that fragrance is a little bit sweeter. I know it has like those fruity touches with the green apple in the opening. So this one, Although it does have a touch of sweetness in the base, probably a little bit of coumarin, it doesn't smell as sweet as like a YSOY. I think this one is a little bit more aquatic. Now, nowhere in the note breakdown does it mention ambergris or ambroxan, which is the synthetic counterpart to ambergris, but I do suspect that there's probably a little bit of ambroxan in there because it does kind of give off like this contemporary, youthful, masculine vibe, but it also, smells similar to other fragrances that I've encountered before. And so I do think that there is a little bit of ambergris in there. Like I said before, I also think there's a bit of uh, sclerene in here as well, which is basically a molecule that gives off the scent of clary sage. And so the clary sage that I'm smelling in here, I think is coming from that sclerene molecule, which is used in many other fragrances, more recently Hermes H24. And so this one has a bit of freshness. It has that sort of designer lavender vibe in here. Just the slightest touch of sweetness 
that maybe will remind you of some other fragrances like YSL's Y, but I think the biggest comparison to be made here is with Mont Blanc's Legend or Abercrombie and Fitch's Fierce, which actually came out first, and then I think Legend sort of manipulated that DNA a little bit. So ultimately, what you're going to get is a contemporary, fresh, lavender-based, masculine fragrance, and it's one that possesses a DNA that you've probably smelled before. So my initial thoughts when I smelled this was, it's nothing new. It's nothing that I haven't smelled before. If somebody blindfolded me and said, hey, smell this and tell me, is this an existing fragrance or is this something brand new that you've never smelled before? I would have said, you know what? I think this is something I've smelled before just because it possesses such a familiar DNA for me. But if you're looking for something that is mid-tier in terms of price, not something that's too cheap or too expensive, something that kind of falls right in the middle, something that is not overly complex and something that has a high complement factor, I think this might be the fragrance for you, especially if you're looking for something that is not 100% similar to what's already on the market. It does come pretty darn close, but it's not 100% similar to something already on the market. I think this might interest you. At the end of the day, is it groundbreaking? No. Is it in innovative? No. Is it earth shattering or something so different and unique and experimental and avant-garde? I really can't say it is, but I do think that it smells good. I think it has a high compliment factor. It has a very accessible DNA. It smells very well groomed. It smells very clean. It has a youthful vibe about it. And of course, you're also going to get that lavender, which kind of creates this sense of like a contemporary polished gentleman. And so if that's what you're going for, but you want a little bit of like an aquatic undertone, like a bluer version of Mont Blanc's Intense, uh, um, Legend, excuse me. If you can imagine a bluer version of Mont Blanc's Legend, that's kind of what you're going to get with Calvin Klein's Defy. I'm really curious for people to go out there, put their own nose on it, and see what this fragrance is all about. Now, I know fragrance is subjective, and so there are some fragrances that I love that other people dislike and vice versa, and so I'm always curious to see what other people think of this one. If you've had the opportunity to sample it, also leave a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, it's really difficult to say that this fragrance is unique because it does kind of remind me of fragrances already on the market. Just that lavender alone really puts me in the mindset of like a Mont Blanc Legend or Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce. Uh, and those are fragrances that have been around, especially Fierce, for a very long time. And so it kind of smells like you're walking past an Abercrombie & Fitch store when you smell this one, to be honest. But the smell is very pleasant. I do think it's going to be a compliment-worthy DNA. I think it's going to be a staple in the Calvin Klein lineup. If you're looking for something a little darker and a little bit more experimental, Calvin Klein has that. You can check out CK1 Shock. You can also check out Calvin Klein Reveal. They have a lot of fragrances that do things in a little bit of a quirky and different way. Some of the Euphoria flankers have also been like really bold uh, to my taste. And so, you know, I think they have a little bit of everything. You know, they kind of tackle all demographics, all clientels. And, you know, you can't hate a company for wanting to make money by putting out a fragrance that just smells good, right? It smells pleasant. It's going to be appreciated by those around you. And it has a high... Uh, batting average when it comes to compliments and I think that that's pretty much what they were aiming for with this brand new 2021 release. Longevity you can expect about seven hours on your skin give or take. Projection was really good for the first hour of application. It did start to sit really close to the skin at about that four to four and a half hour mark. Versatility I think it's very versatile. I think it's a perfect office fragrance. So if you're wearing it to work, if you know you're going to be around a lot of other people and you don't want to wear anything that's going to offend anybody or anything that's too experimental, I think this is a very safe option. I also think that this one would probably work a little bit better in the hotter weather. And you can pull this off in the autumn, say like October or early November. I think this would work really well. But again, if you're wearing it indoors, you can pretty much wear it whenever you want. I do think it gives off more of a casual vibe as opposed to a form Formal vibe. If I'm going to go with something a bit more formal, there are other options from Calvin Klein that you can explore for that. Not as casual as like a CK1 summer flanker, but maybe like three steps up from that. In terms of the presentation, 
I like the shape of the bottle. I think it fits very nicely in the hand. I think the name Defy is pretty cool as well. And I think the color of the liquid inside the bottle kind of hints at what this is going to smell like. My final verdict on this fragrance is this fragrance doesn't do anything new. Uh, this fragrance utilizes a DNA that you've smelled before half a dozen times, but it does it slightly differently and it has a uh, mass appeal. It's put together in a very smoothly uh, executed way. It comes across smelling polished. I think it's a great office scent. It's the type of fragrance that I think people will compliment you on. But at the end of the day, I think it smells similar to some other fragrances already on the market. And if you're looking for something that is brand new, something you've never smelled before, something that's a total game changer, really pushes the envelope, I don't think you're gonna get it with Defy. But if you're looking for something that smells simple, something very smooth, polished, youthful, contemporary, mass appealing, I think Defy is a very safe bet. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you took something of value from this video. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. And once again, if you would like to enter for your chance to win a 5ml decant, all you have to do once again is just leave a comment down below. Let me know what is your favorite Calvin Klein fragrance if you have one. If not, that's cool. You can just say, I don't have a favor from the house. I will be picking the comment again in one week's time. So definitely make sure to come back to this video in one week to see if you've won because I will be pinning the winning comment to the top of the comment thread. It's going to say pinned by Redolescence. I know there are some comments that says highlighted comment. That's not it. It needs to say pinned by Redolescence. Good luck, everyone. Love you all. We'll see you soon. Bye.